My name is Dr. Cheryl Wagner. So my name is Darian Taylor. Dr. Jean-Pierre Houdy. My name is David Nambiars. I've been working in Northern Ontario doing fly-in medicine in the Native communities. I got a call from a friend, Dr. Evan Collins, who I'd gone through medical school with. And he told me that there was a physician um, who had a practice in the village of mainly gay men. And he himself, this physician had acquired PCP pneumonia. And he needed somebody to step into his practice. So I left the North and early 1986, I stepped in to take over his practice. Nothing, very little was known at that time. And as you know, there were no treatments. We didn't have CD4 counts. We didn't have viral loads. We couldn't even track where our patients were at clinically. In terms of better having better access to medications, so people were looking uh, for anything that helped them. I mean, I had, um, a partner who was resistant to the two drugs at that point, I think AZT and 3TC or something. Uh, he was resistant to both of them, he couldn't take them. So uh, there was a strong sense of, you know, empathy that people needed to uh, be affirmed for and validated in terms of their feelings. I, I was not, I thought I was going to die of HIV. I, I was pretty sure of that. There's also a high level of stress and desperation of what to do because many of the trials that were happening uh, were still not accessible to most people living in HIV at that point. We used a lot of, as I recall, antibiotics, um, antivirals, acyclovir, a lot of uh, vitamins, herbs, none of which had any effect, but it gave patients something to grasp onto and probably gave ourselves something to feel like we were doing something. As a physician, you're trained to do something. And this was very hard. Well, in 1996, we all trundled off to the uh, International AIDS Society conference in, in uh, Vancouver that year. And heard about the incredible success of combination therapy including protease inhibitors ça a été donc euh, le, le de montrer l'efficacité de de trithérapie et à ce moment-là les traitements duraient plusieurs années alors qu'au début ça marchait 6 mois 9 mois et c'est grâce aux inhibiteurs de protéase que là le virus a eu la difficulté à résister et que les traitements s'ils étaient bien pris pouvaient de, de, durer des années. It really felt like the sun came out. And ironically for Vancouver, the sun was shining that entire week. And uh, it just matched the weather for once in Vancouver, sort of matched the mood of the participants. On an individual basis, patients had, it had a profound effect, obviously, because my patients were living with the expectation that they would have a life expectancy of one, two years, maybe five years. Um, and now they were suddenly looking at potentially having decades of life ahead of them. Well, I bought a house. That was my, that back in the days here in Toronto when you could buy a house, you know, on an AIDS worker's salary, right? I just thought, okay, okay, like it was part of, actually trying to, you know, like intentionally shift my mind to thinking about a future, thinking about a life. And I was like, I need to do something significant that shows an investment in the future. So what better than a 25 year mortgage? Probably the most profound impact I saw was on the women in my practice. They were starting to have kids who weren't HIV infected. 
But their time horizon was, and they would talk to me about this, just just keep me alive long enough so I can get my kid into kindergarten. And suddenly, with these drugs, we were talking about having their kids, seeing their kids graduate from high school and maybe even seeing their kids get married. Uh, they, they couldn't quite believe that they might see grandchildren. But that was the dramatic shift in their horizon uh, as, as mothers. So at that point, because we were so excited, actually medications were available, no one thought about the short term or long term side effects. I think that's just humanity. Like, we're so excited, we don't think, you know, how do drugs affect our body? C'est-à-dire qu'au début, il y avait ben, les premiers comprimés. On a pu comprendre que comme dans le cancer ou la tuberculose pour traiter, il fallait en mettre plusieurs à la fois pour attaquer le virus à des différents sites au niveau de, de sa multiplication dans la cellule. Alors à la fois, c'était une grande découverte et les patients allaient mieux, duraient plus longtemps pour le traitement, mais au prix d'un nombre très, très important de comprimés. Et là, un certain nombre de patients ont arrêté, étaient découragés à cause des effets secondaires du nombre et de la fréquence des comprimés. Et c'est là où il y a eu tout un effort mondial pour essayer que ce soit des prises uniques quotidiennes et idéalement sous forme d'un seul comprimé. Katie was a resource that all of us uh, as physicians relied upon. It was quick, it turned around information. The information was scientifically rigorous. Um, it was up to date and we could trust it. In particular, the uh, early treatment books that Katie put out for, for patients. We would have a stack of those in our office and I would give them to patients and I would, it was a, it was a way to um, bring the patient in to collaborate. This young man walked up to me and he said, you're Devin, right? And I said, yes, he said, you work at Katie? I said, yes, I do. And he said, I want to thank you. And I said, for what exactly? He said, no, he said, I called and I got you on the phone and you told me exactly what to do. <laughs> and I said, what should I tell you to do? I have no idea. <laughs> And so he said, you explained the drugs I was taking and you told me I had to see my doctor and explain what options I had in terms of changing medication. And he said, you saved my life and the quality of my life. Katie's, you know, uh, ability to, to create and sustain and, and revise and keep it relevant is, is hugely important. Like, it seems a little bit historic now that we're all, you know, about websites and social media, you know, this clunking great, this clunking great book that, you know, is still around. But, but that was so, was and is so important.